Hello there. Welcome back to the React Masterclass by my project ideas. And today we are going to see how to manipulate the DOM inside the React JS. So DOM manipulation is not a new topic. It was also in the vanilla JavaScript and so it will be in the React JS and we will explore how to manipulate it in the React JS and we will see the use cases. So when we discuss the use ref work, we already shown that how to manipulate in JSX element via DOM manipulation. So you can check out in this use ref video, uh, which is already in the playlist. So first, this is how we manipulate an element. First, we define a use ref hook and then assign the ref property of particular element to that use ref hook. And then wherever we want, we can manipulate its properties. So here in this image, uh, I am controlling this, uh, I'm manipulating this div element here in the use effect. Uh, it is very simple. There's nothing complex here. So now let's just see how to use the event listeners in the React. Using event listener inside the React components is not a hassle. It's just like the vanilla JavaScript, but only def defined inside the effect handlers like use effect. That's it. We have to define our event handlers inside the use effect. That is the most important point to note. So we will be discussing two types of event handlers, window event listeners and individual elements event listeners. So mostly we mount the event listeners inside the use effect so that when the component mount, then the event listener is established and we will remove event listener inside the cleanup function of the use effect. So, and that happens when the component will unmount. So let's just see the window event listeners. So these are event listeners for the window object for the process. So when any window event is triggered, then we can perform any task or execute the code that we want to execute. For example, I'm in this code snippet, I'm using the resize event as a window event listener. So this is the syntax you will follow window dot add event listener, just like the vanilla JavaScript, nothing complex. So just like that, we can have on resize, uh, on load, online, offline, on unload event, and many more. And single event listeners, single element event listeners. Just like the window event listeners, we can also make the event listeners on individual elements. And it's very simple. So just like that, we can have a ref, use ref hook, and then assign that user ref hook to that particular element. And then we can use that uh, event listener on this use ref hook itself or use ref hook value. But uh, we don't know, we don't need to do that because because some events like on click on blur on focus, these events are already defined on the JSX elements. So you can directly use the attributes inside the JSX elements instead of defining the events separately. So we have already discussed this in the previous button events lecture or the tutorial. So now let's see an example of implementing the event listeners. Now let's just show you the practical way of manipulation of DOM and event listeners. So what I'm going to do is here is my empty app component and inside the outer div, I have already defined the class name as container, which I have defined in the app.css. Okay, let me remove this comma so that it will not give the error. Okay, fine. So what we will do now, let's have another div here. Inside that div, let me create a paragraph tag and inside the paragraph tag, I'll say the box. Okay, fine. Let us see what can we do here. So to manipulate this div element, I want to manipulate this div element. So what can we do here? What can we do here is this. I will have a use ref hook, which is, okay, I will say it element, which is use ref. Here it is. And initial value will be none. Okay, now I will give the ref property to element. Okay, now we have this thing. And now what we can do is we will define the use effect hook as always, because 
without use effect hook, uh, it is not good to define outside of that. So now what we will do here is, okay, we will see if we can manipulate this uh, box background color. So what we can do here is, uh, okay, just forget this use effect hook. We can directly see if uh, we are clicking on that box, then the box color will change on click. So it will be an empty functions. So what we will do is, uh, what we will do is, we will get this ref element. So element dot current dot style dot background color. But instead of red, I will say it will be yellow. Okay. Now let us save it. And simply let us see if our code is running or not. I will come up to this use effect later. Okay, as you can see, the box is there. But what should happen if we click on this box? Okay, the yellow color appeared. As you can see, we are manipulating the uh, uh, dome element. We are manipulating the dome tree itself directly. So this is not a good way to do. Uh, you should avoid it maximum times because uh, we can do that with styles too by using the use state hook inside the styles elements of that uh, this particular thing. So what we can do is we can also um, give the color to color of the text inside the box to be black. As you can see, now let's just go here and refresh this thing. And if I click on this, as you can see, the color of text inside it is black. Just clicking on the box will change its properties. So this is how you manipulate the tool. And now let us come to the event listeners at the same time. So what I can do here is I have a first, okay, first written empty cleanup function, okay. And let's just comment here, clean up function, okay. And here, what I'll say is window dot add event listener, and inside that event listener, I will say resize, and I will provide a empty arrow function or callback function as a second art argument, and I will console dot log. So I will change. I will say that the resize event is triggered as you can see. Okay. So now let us see what will happen inside of our application. Okay. Resize event is triggered two times. Okay. These are errors and don't know where it is caught, but let's ignore them. Refresh it. Okay. No error. So as we resize this thing, this event is triggered. So 210 times the resize event is triggered because we are resizing the window more often. Now it is 522 times as you can see. So whenever the windows resize this, you can change anything like the element color of this particular div also or any other thing you want to manipulate. So let me define another user app hook. Let container which is going to use ref equal null and give this ref as container. And now what we'll do is whenever the resize event is triggered, then we will change the color of background color of the container. Simple. So container dot current dot background color equal red. I will say it's cyan. Okay. Now let's just see what will happen. Okay. We have not resized yet. Okay. As you can see, the container color has become cyan. So this is how we manipulate the dome inside of our application. So also don't forget to match, remove the event listener inside the cleaner function. 
remove event listener and inside that resize and whatever function you want to execute after that it's on you okay okay now let's just see what happens window resize event happened and uh, the color also be also changed here and if we resize this the resize event is triggering absolutely okay that that's it that was it okay so why should we use the dom manipulations inside the react js okay if there is any requirement for changing element this time or focusing input in the forms or altering any other properties of the element that can't be handled by other means or other methods rather than the manipulating dom then this is the time you have to use the dom manipulations using it for every purpose is not a good practice and good approach a little that is satisfying the requirement is good enough so why to avoid the dom manipulations on the components so try to avoid that because the components with which have too many children nodes it is very hard to render all the children nodes again and that will be costly that will be time consuming so that's why don't use dom manipulations inside the super parent components and avoid it most of the times uh, instead use states so mostly try to avoid the manipulation of the dom directly another common use case is to when we want focus and blur events on inputs so that is a common use case thank you for reaching here i hope you enjoyed this react js course and i hope you will be enjoying more let's meet in the next video in which i will show you how to use the tailwind css